In this video, we're going to learn how to draw conclusions using test statistics, either by comparing a p-value to a predetermined value of alpha, or by comparing a calculated test statistic to a predetermined critical value of a statistic. Uh, in hypothesis testing, we always have two options. So we would write our uh, null and alternative hypotheses. And when we're done with a test and we have a conclusion, these are the two options. We can reject the null hypothesis, or we can fail to reject the null hypothesis. If you reject the null hypothesis, that means you have enough evidence uh, to say that the claimed value is not supported. So the claimed value, remember, could be whatever the, the population mean or population proportion was claimed to be in your null hypothesis. Um, if you fail to reject the null hypothesis, that means you did not have enough evidence to reject the null hypothesis. So the claimed value is actually supported. So again, whatever the claimed value was in your null hypothesis for a mean or a proportion, uh, that's going to be supported if you fail to reject the null hypothesis. So you'll notice that there's nothing about accept in those two options. We either reject or fail to reject. Uh, we don't say that we accept the null hypothesis because accept sounds like you proved something. And we never really say that we prove anything when we do a statistical test. So we haven't proven anything with the test. Um, we've just, if we, if the evidence supports the null hypothesis, we say we haven't disproved it, but the evidence supports uh, the null hypothesis. So if the evidence supports the null hypothesis, that is fail to reject the null hypothesis. If it does not support, that would be a conclusion to reject the null hypothesis. Um, just a quick tip when you're working on problems, uh, to always explain the conclusion in the context of the original problem. So explain what your conclusion means. Don't just write reject the null hypothesis explain what that means in the context of the problem. All right, the first method we're going to look at for drawing conclusions is comparing a p-value to alpha. Uh, we know that the p-value is the probability of seeing a certain result, um, and the alpha is the predetermined uh, sort of cutoff value for a probability that we decide on before the problem. So say that we were doing a right-tailed test. So we're going to be looking at areas on the right. And we have a predetermined cutoff value of alpha, so all of this area right here is alpha. And then we're going to calculate a test statistic, and that will give us a p-value. And let's say that our test statistic ends up being over here. So now this shaded area is our p-value. 
So the p-value and alpha are different sizes. And you can see that the p-value is smaller than alpha. And that's the rule that we're looking at. Well, what happens if p-value is less than or equal to alpha? When that happens, our conclusion is going to be reject the null hypothesis. So you can see that your value, whatever it is here, I'm just going to put an x, your value is more extreme than the claimed value, or, sorry, uh, than whatever cutoff value. that gives you the value of alpha for that area. Okay. So since your probability of your test statistic is smaller than the probability of what you set up for alpha, uh, you're going to reject the null hypothesis. There's um, The evidence does not support the claimed value in the null hypothesis. Uh, the other possibility is that your p-value is going to end up being greater than alpha. So we'll look at a right-tailed test again just to have consistency. So again, this area here is alpha. And we'll say that we do a test and now our test statistic is here. So now all of this is our p-value. Everything to the right of the red line. So now our p-value is all of this area and alpha is a smaller area here. So now when we compare the two, the p-value is greater than alpha. So we would fail to reject the null hypothesis. Uh, the evidence supports the claimed value in the null hypothesis. Okay. The other way to do these problems is to use critical values. And here we're looking at values of either z or, or t when we learn about the t distribution. Right. So you, again, we'll do right-tailed tests. So if we, when the problem starts, if we select a critical value of z, and I'm going to call it z alpha, because that's a critical value of z. And when you calculate z using your sample and you get a z that's bigger, and I'll call this test, so z from your statistical test that you did. If your z is bigger than the critical z, or z alpha, you reject the null hypothesis. And if you kind of compare that to what we just did with the p-value, you can see that the, the area that would correspond to the critical value of z is bigger than the area that would correspond to the test z. So instead of looking at the areas though, we can just look at the numbers and say that your test statistic is bigger than the critical value of the statistic and you can reject the null hypothesis. And then same idea. So if the critical value of z is here and you do a statistical test and your calculated value of z ends up being here. Now your value of z is going to be less than the critical value and the rule there is to fail to reject the null hypothesis.
So those are your rules. Uh, if the p-value is less than alpha, reject the null hypothesis. If the p-value is greater than alpha, fail to reject the null hypothesis. If you're using the critical value method, if your calculated test statistic is greater than the critical value, you reject the null hypothesis. If your calculated test statistic is less than the critical value, you fail to reject the null hypothesis. Let's look at some examples of drawing conclusions with test statistics. Uh, I'm going to show both the p-value method and the critical value method for four different examples. Uh, we have examples of right-tailed, left-tailed, and two-tailed tests. So you should see everything um, that you would encounter in uh, practice problems. So we'll start with um, the first one. You can see in the alternative hypothesis the sign is greater than, so we're going to do a right-tailed test. It gives us a value for z and a value for alpha. This z is the z that was um, the test statistic. This is what's calculated. It's not the critical value of z, which we would get from alpha. All right, so let's draw a picture. Draw a picture for each one so we know what we're looking for. Um, the z that they give us is 2.5, which would be somewhere out here. And the p-value is the area beyond the test statistic. It's going to be this shaded area. And we know to get an area from the z-distribution, we can do the normal CDF function on the calculator. Put in the minimum value, which would be 2.5 if we're going to the right, up to some maximum, we'll use 99. The mean is 0 and the standard deviation is 1. And if you were to plug that into your calculator, get 0 0.0062. So then we can take our p-value and compare it to alpha. Our p-value is 0 0.0062. Alpha is 0 0.05. Our p-value is less than alpha, and the rule is when the p-value is less than alpha, reject the null hypothesis. So the critical value method, to solve that, we would need a critical value of z, or z alpha, and in this case, alpha is 0 0.05. And you can look these up in a table that is the z table in your um, pullout from your book. Um, or if you're looking for 0 0.05, remember this is a right tailed test, so 0 0.05 would be this area right here. That means the area to the left of your critical z is 0.95. So you could also solve. using the inverse normal function in your calculator, in which case you'd get 1.645 for the critical value of z. It corresponds to an alpha area of 0 0.05. And then we take the z from the test, which was given to us, 2.50 from the problem. And we take our critical z, z alpha, which we just found was 1.645. And the test statistic, z, is bigger than the critical value of z. And that leads us to the conclusion to reject the null hypothesis. So the same problem, just two ways of solving it. In either case, you get the same answer. You reject the null hypothesis. Second one is a two-tailed test. The alternative hypothesis is not equal to. And again, let's draw a picture to start. In a two-tailed test, if they just give you one value of z, should be out here, remember that you just need to do the mirror image. So now we're going to be over here. This would be negative 2.5. The p-value is the area on both tails. which we'd have to add together. 
uh, we already know that the, the area over here to the right of 2.5 is 0 0.0062 from the previous problem. And since it's a mirror image, the area over here must also be 0 0.0062. So when you're doing a two-tailed test, you can just find one side or one area and you can multiply it by two and you'll get your total area or p-value. for both tails. Then again, we just take our p-value and compare it to alpha, so 0 0.0124, and alpha is given to us in the problem is 0 0.05. Our p-value is less than alpha, so our conclusion is to reject the null hypothesis. The critical value method for that one, um, we have to find a critical z for a two-tailed test. So z alpha is z.05, but we want z alpha over 2 because it's a two-tailed test. So 0 0.05 divided by 2 is 0 0.025. That would be the area to the right of the positive z-score. So let's just do a quick little sketch here. That's 0 0.025. The area to the left would be 1 minus that, which is 0.975. So we can do an inverse normal, 0.975 mean of 0, standard deviation of 1, and that gives us a z-score of 1.96. So that is our critical value of z for a two-tailed test. So now we can take our z-score from the test, which was 2.5, and we can take the critical value of z, 1.96. Our test statistic for z is bigger than the critical value of z, and the rule there is to reject the null hypothesis. So again, two ways of solving the problem, both of them result in the same answer. Number three, now we have a left tail, less than. So we're going to be interested in some area over here. They give us a z of negative 2.75. We want the area to the left of that, it will be our p value. And area to the left, we can use our normal CDF. Some really low number for the minimum, negative 2.75 for the maximum, 0 and 1 for the mean and standard deviation, and we get 0 0.003. That's our p-value. Alpha given to us in the problem is 0 0.01, and 0 0.003 is less than 0 0.01, so again, p-value less than alpha will reject the null hypothesis. All right, the critical value method, uh, now we need, it's a one-tailed test, so just alpha, and alpha is 0 0.01, and again, you could look up the number uh, at the bottom of a z-table, or we can do inverse normal, and since we're looking for the area on the left, we can just use 0 0.01 with a mean of 0 and a standard deviation of 1, we get negative 2.33. So we have the z from the test, which was given to us in the problem, negative 2.75. And we have z critical, or alpha, which is negative 2.33. When you're comparing these, um, you want the value, the absolute value, not the 
with the negatives on there, so we're going to do the absolute value. We're going to compare 2.75 to 2.33. So our test statistic is bigger. It's farther away from zero. That's why we do the absolute value, because we want the distance away from zero. So the, the test statistic is farther from zero, which means it's bigger, um, and then we would reject the null hypothesis. Last one, another two-tailed test. Here we have a z-score of negative 1.85. And since the alternative hypothesis is not equals, we're going to do a mirror image two-tailed test. So I'm putting 1.85 over here. Our p-value is going to be both tails added together. So let's get the area of one side. It doesn't matter which side you use. And if we know the area of one side, we can multiply it by two for a two-tailed test, because both sides are going to be equal. And that is our p-value. So now we can take our p-value and alpha. And in this case, our p-value is greater than alpha, which means we fail to reject the null hypothesis. All right, so that one in a critical value method. We're using 0 0.05 for z. But since it's two-tailed, we are actually, we need alpha over two. And 0 0.05 divided by two is 0 0.025. So we can do inverse normal. And we get negative 1.96 for a critical z-score. The z from the test, oh, let's put that on the side. Test statistic z is negative 1.85. And again, when we're looking at these, we just want the distance away from zero. So we're going to take the absolute value and just compare the positive versions of the z scores. And our test statistic is less than the uh, critical z which means we are going to fail to reject the null hypothesis. So again, both methods give us the same conclusion, fail to reject the null hypothesis.